Good morning, my colleagues. Um, my name is Tarek Tawil, and I'm one of the orthopedic surgeons at the National Institute of Neuromotor System in Cairo. This is a case report of total hip replacement for old undislocatable central dislocation with fibrous ankylosis, a new technique of autografting. Before I start uh, our case today, I would like just to show you a few cases of uh, neglected central dislocation. This is a 48 year old man when I saw him first time and this is 10 years follow up. He um, didn't like to have a total hip replacement and he was satisfied with uh, his situation like this. Following that, I lost him to follow up. This is a lady who was uh, a bit more than 30 years old who had this injury which was not uh, properly uh, managed and she has this uh, central dislocation. I uh, advised her to have a total hip replacement. I did the operation for her as you're going to see now. And uh, the uh, simple technique is just to dislocate the uh, joint, take the head and uh, use it as a mercerized uh, impaction grafting. And as you can see, we could uh, bring the uh, hip center to a more or less anatomic uh, location. And this is a larger view and uh, to show you that the uh, uh, affected side was uh, brought down to length. This is another lady who was 32 years old when I saw her first time and she tells me that she had her uh, injury or accident 13 years ago and uh, she had no chance to have a total hip replacement as some surgeons refused to uh, operate on her. However, she uh, was offered a total hip replacement as well. This is uh, a better view for the pelvis after uh, proper squaring. And as you can notice, uh, there is no much shortening of the uh, right side and uh, the same technique would be done is to uh, dislocate uh, just you you trim or remove the uh, uh, stabular osteophytes around the uh, neck and then uh, you may gently dislocate it and this uh, shows you the uh, uh, totally seamless total hip replacement and this is the uh, this is immediate post-op x-ray this is the uh, autografting using the head as a mercerized impaction grafting and two uh, screws for uh, fixation this is a few years after her operation as you can notice and maybe uh, she has an intrauterine uh, contraceptive device now and um, uh, there is complete uh, take of the uh, graft the situation is still uh, quite uh, good no signs of uh, loosening whether of the femoral or of the astabular component and she was quite satisfied with the result definitely when I do these operations if I face any problem in bringing the femur down to length, I would do uh, some release of the hip abductors, gluteus medius and minimus, uh, by uh, releasing or incising the uh, uh, anterior one half or one uh, or more, a bit more of the uh, insertion at the greater uh, troch. At the same time, <clears throat> we may release uh, part of the uh, insertion of iliosoas at the lesser uh, trochanter and um, almost always I do uh, percutaneous abductor tenotomy. Uh, this is a step is quite important actually in uh, total hip replacement as uh, many cases have abduction deformity and there is considerable spasm of the uh, adductor uh, muscles that when you do a total hip replacement and you 
uh, retain the original uh, length of the uh, femur, you apply uh, a very uh, uh, strong uh, strain over the uh, adductor group, and definitely they need uh, some sort of uh, adductor release. And this is a lateral view, and this is the <clears throat> final view, and I make um, the two x-rays almost the same uh, position and size that you can make uh, your comparison. Now this is um, our case that I'll be discussing today and this is a 42 year old woman. Uh, when I saw her she told me that she had an accident some 18 years ago and uh, now she uh, almost uh, lost any movement at this uh, uh, left hip, she is limping and uh, she is suffering some uh, low back pain as well. And I thought uh, I would do a total hip replacement as usual. Maybe uh, if I remove the osteophytes around the uh, periphery of the acetabulum and uh, trim the neck, and uh, with some gentle manipulation, I may be able to bring this uh, head out. But uh, as you may see from the uh, geography of the X-ray here, that uh, it's quite a narrow outlet, and the head inside is uh, much larger, and maybe um, it's not easy to bring it out. Add to this, in the uh, operation, uh, when I exposed the hip, and tried to movement, there was just minimal uh, movement at the uh, joint, uh, which could be seen by direct uh, vision. And um, actually, uh, I thought of just cutting the, um, the neck as close as possible to the um, acetabulum and uh, ream the head while inside as uh, there was very strong fibrous uh, union or fibrous ankylosis I would say and when I uh, come to a suitable uh, size of reaming definitely the uh, remnant part of the head would be uh, 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 is not a stable bed for the uh, acetabular uh, cup to insert and I uh, thought I would make uh, some drill holes as I'm going to show I would make some, uh, after reaming of the uh, acetabulum, I would make some uh, drill holes through the remnant of the head up into the acetabulum, take uh, uh, three pegs from the uh, neck or what's left of the neck and uh, just uh, uh, insert them into these holes as sort of uh, grafting and at the same time make some few drill holes from the uh, remnant of the head up to the uh, acetabulum. Then I would use uh, the cup safely uh, by the time and uh, use a couple of screws as you could see. Uh, this is an immediate post-op x-ray and you can see the joint line is still uh, quite clear uh, as you can see here. And uh, this is just to compare before and after these squares to hide the uh, patient's name. And this is a 17 months uh, post-op X-ray. I apologize for the quality of the X-ray, but uh, 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 there is very good uh, take of the uh, uh, graft. You will have further, uh, much better uh, X-rays. This is uh, two years down the line now. And you may notice that having this uh, generous graft, um, which actually is the uh, original head of the patient, and we could, uh, to a great extent, uh, bring the hip center to a more or less anatomic uh, position and uh, lateralize it and uh, uh, with few uh, some other few uh, x-rays. Uh, this lateral view uh, 
uh, as the arrows point show you the uh, very good quality of the bone around the acetabular component. Now this is a short video for the uh, patient uh, two years post-op. Very good result actually, maybe minimal limb, uh, but you can see it quite comfortably with uh, 90 degrees flexion of the hip. Now this is eight years uh, down the line and you can notice the very good uh, taking of the uh, graft and that uh, everything is uh, still in place. And now nine years uh, post-op x-ray and you can see that uh, still everything is placed but uh, this lady told me that she uh, after having her operation done, used to walk around uh, six kilometers uh, per day uh, to her uh, work and back, uh, three kilometers to work and three kilometers back. And maybe uh, this is a cause of some sort of early uh, poly wear, as you can notice from the uh, uh, from the. Uh, X-ray here that this uh, distance at the weight-bearing area is smaller than the uh, non-weight-bearing area. So I'm going to uh, magnify here. If you take this uh, magnification, you can uh, simply notice this. Now, she uh, is still actually nine years following her operation still quite happy with the result and doing very well so the a message from this if you have fibrous ankylosis uh, while doing a total hip uh, replacement you can simply retain uh, the head inside do your reaming and uh, fix it with uh, uh, small uh, pegs from the uh, neck or remnants of the uh, head itself and then you can uh, safely apply your cup and uh, further stabilization with uh, two or three screws thank you very much for watching